Hello and welcome to Lua Lesson 10. In this lesson we're going to do about reading text files and tail calls. Alright, so you notice on screen, at the mo on screen at the moment I've got some code for opening a text file. Um, I'll just walk you through it. So, create a new variable called file name and set it to test.txt and I've commented it here, set variable file name to the file's name. Then, we set and create another variable called file and equal to assert I'm not sure if you pronounce it like that but I'm saying assert and uh, basically what this does is it helps us with error handling and if there's an error it'll tell us um, and then in the assert brackets we have IO so it's another IO call like IO.write IO.open and then more brackets file name so that's the variable we made which is test.txt and then R, which is just another parameter we enter. Then, in sort of this second half, where we're actually doing things with it, we have string1, so that's a new variable, equals file read all. So it kind of makes sense. File read, so it's reading the file, and it's, how much of it's reading? It's reading all of it. And then it prints, don't need that, it prints the whole of it. So. That's pretty much that. That's pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, um, that's that. But um, where should test.txt be so the Lua file knows where it is? Well, at the moment, because we've only specified it as test.txt, it looks in the folder that the Lua file's in. So you may notice up here, my location, my Lua file, is C users user documents lua lua lesson 10 dot lua so i've already got this open down here and i've already created a file called test.txt which open this up it contains hello youtube or viewers of my site exclamation mark and then a new line it says hi and then another line it says hi uh, let's just differentiate these two let's just say hi uh stop okay so that's test.txt at the moment. So it's in the same folder. Where's the file gone? Lua lesson 10, here it is. Lua lesson 10, so it's in the same folder. So if we run this, it should know where it is. There you go. It says, hello YouTube, or viewers of my site. Hi, sup. And it's all on separate lines. It prints it exactly how it's in the file. The thing is, you're not always gonna wanna print the whole of the document. So for this last bit, Let's just take this out and let's add a bit of different code. So, this is some other code I had pre, well, I had ready. Um, this basically prints out the first line. So, file, that's the variable file, seek, set. And what that does, it brings it to the first line, well, exactly the start of the file, so it brings it, not necessarily the first line. Um, and then, make a new string called string2, just because the other one was string1. And we eat, um, we set it to file read line. So instead of before it said all there, now we say line. So it reads the line from where it's set, and it's set with the seek function. Okay, you following this? And then we print. We don't need this part. We print the string. So it finds which it goes to the start. It sets string two to the line from the start. Then it prints string two. So this should output hello YouTube or viewers of my site because this is the first line of the document. So if we run this, there we go. Hello YouTube or viewers of my site. Uh, that's pretty much it with the text files with reading them. Um, it's all pretty simple. You can just basically locate where you are and then select stuff from there. So then the second thing in this lesson is going to be tail calls. Now this is a nice little addition to Lua, and let's just say we're going to make a function. We're going to make a function called print. We're going to make it with a capital P because otherwise it would um, use the keyword print, which actually prints stuff. But no, this is a function print, and it has value as a parameter. Let's just create our ending, and then and then all we do is it's just going to use the normal print thing, and it's going to print value. So if we called it and gave it a value, then it's going to go, okay, I got the value, and then it's going to print the value. 
So it's like a second function now. And what's it gonna do? Let me think. You can say output no return twelve. No. Um twelve, let's just call it twelve. Um no, two. Two is easier. Two is a nice number. So function two. And it's actually called two. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna go two. No, it's not. Basically it wants to print two, but for some reason we don't want it to print it itself because that we don't want to have to write print again. We can just use the print up here. So I mean in reality we could actually just use the actual print function. But this is just an example. So we're gonna go print. I mean our value is gonna be two. So we could do that. We could do that fine. However, we could actually return the function, which is a lot easier. So you can actually have a chain of functions which call each other at the end. So what this basically will do is it'll end function two. I'll go, okay, we're called. Okay, returning and ending, end. So function two's dead now, but just before it dies, it calls print with a value of two. So it prints two. And this is basically what tail calls are. They're calling other functions in the returning section. So to just demonstrate this, we can just go to actually it probably wants some open closey brackets. And then we just run program. And you see it prints too. Obviously there are a lot more complicated examples where we can actually have a chain of functions calling each other at the end. Um, you know, it's all pretty useful. Um, basically, yeah, um, the text lesson says quite a lot about this. It explains a bit more in the reading and the tail functions and stuff like that. Um, have a go with making your own text files, reading the text files, try various different lines. And um, that's the end of this lesson. Have a nice day.